in the nets. My name is Ellie and I am a Norwegian living and knitting in London. And you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Skeinder. In addition to the Ravelry group Skeinder Knits. Welcome to this podcast. Uh, thank you so much for watching if you're checking this out for the first time and welcome back if you are a regular viewer. As you will know if you are a regular viewer I just want to start off by covering the uh, essentials that is going on in the Skin to Knits group. There are a number of knit alongs running. There's the flea cardigan knit along which I will be touching more on when I go into my work in progress flea cardigan and then there is the Color Your World Socks Cal which will be closing up at the end of this month. Um, there will also be a knit along starting uh, that will be the Marius knit along which will start when the Color Your World Socks knit along ends, so that will be the 1st of September. Another knit along that kind of starts the 1st of September and kind of already has started is the Sudbury Mitten Club and that's probably the most exciting thing that's happening in relation to this podcast and I will be ah, raving about it at least until the end of the year so bear with me. So for those of you who don't know I have a pattern subscription club and knit along for traditional Norwegian Sudbury Mittens. Now I say traditional, I have uh, tweaked them a bit. Well, I say tweak them. I designed them and I decided them to be beginner friendly so they kind of divert a bit from the traditional by being DK weight knit at a fairly loose gauge with that thick yarn, you know, thicker than fingering. And they knit up quickly, they are beginner friendly. I have written a lot of detailed instructions, tips and tricks for colour work, and yeah. So I made one pattern of those in January and then I felt like people should have some more patterns to choose from so I started developing more and as that took most of my summer I figured let's make a club for this you know let's first I thought I'd make an exclusive bundle but then I thought it would be cool to kind of drop a pattern per month and then now those months kind of line up before Christmas so that you will have four to five pairs of mittens for Christmas for yourself or to give away or to hang on your tree. I don't really care. It's up to you. I just think this is going to be so much fun and nice. I'm just, uh, I'm excited. I am quite nervous to be releasing these patterns uh, one by one. Uh, I am super grateful that you guys have trusted in me. And yeah, so that's why I'm mentioning that now because it is not just a pattern subscription club. It is a cow knit along and I have opened the thread for that on Ravelry in my Ravelry group already so you can actually start posting what you have finished of the first Cyber Mittens because I added the pattern that I had additionally published in January into this bundle just to like give you an idea of what this club will be like uh, it made sense for those mittens to be part of that because they are in the same family so to speak and it means you can get started now, you can practice on those, because if you can make those, you can make all the mittens in this club, I promise you. And so people have already started making those mittens, so I had to start making a finished object thread. But I will not allow whips from before August, I think. In all fairness, let's just allow whips from August, and then from now on. Good, now that we have all of that covered, I have some prizes to hand out. I have been given two patterns to give away and one of them is the Town Wall Socks by Anna Fliebe, also known as Janesti, previously known as Apaka Anna. And she has designed the Town Wall Socks, which is a mystery knit along that will be starting on, I want to say the 18th of August, which is the day after this podcast will be up. So hopefully this episode will reach you by then, you lucky readers out there, because Anna gave me two patterns to give away. So one I was drawing from the uh, giveaway thread that I made for these socks, and the other one I draw for the Collier World Socks Cal. So I encourage people to cast on, because as long as you cast on, you are eligible. I'm not going to scrutinize and see if you're finished or not. So I have run this through random number generator and I want to go through the winners with you. So for the giveaway thread, post 55 was the winner and the name is, and I'm going to read it while I say it because otherwise it'll be wrong, Textrinian. Textrinian, I think. Uh, so yeah, you won and you posted some socks. Okay, so I want to cover the rules 
that I, I'm very sorry if you can hear my neighbor's dog. Usually you can't, but I can't, and I'm going mad, and I wanna just strangle the owner. Sorry, I didn't mean that, if you are watching owner, neighbor. But yes, Textrinum, you posted some amazing socks in this thread, and for those of you who weren't here, for me to mention the rules of this giveaway last time, the rule is that you post the best socks you have ever knitted, and I think these socks were totally worthy of being uh, named the winner. I'm sorry, I find this dog barking incredibly distracting. <laughs> anyway, they were a gorgeous pair of socks, full on colour work. They're called the elephant, some, water for elephants, I think. Uh, she just called them the elephant socks, and that's totally what I call them in my mind as well. Because I do know about this pattern, and I think it's a gorgeous pattern. I did actually make some colour work mittens by the same designer, and yeah. They are roughly in the same style and it's a really, really cool pattern. So you are a very worthy winner. And so what you need to do is to contact me on Ravelry and then I will pass your username forwards to Anna who will gift you the pattern. And the same applies for the next winner who is, drumroll, post 16, which is fun nine. And this is drawn from the um, chatter thread for the Color Your World socks and Fun 9 has actually finished her socks so I think this is very well deserved although that certainly wasn't a criteria and the socks she made after quite a hurdle to get there to make them fit and make it all right they look stunning I love the color choices it's just a mix of brown and blue and just it's just right and I wish I thought about those colors myself so you are a winner as well. So you need to contact me on Ravelry and I will pass you along to Anna Freebite and she will give you the pattern. And when I say give you the pattern to both of you, um, the pattern is not really fully released yet. You know, there'll be a queue coming up every so often. So the first queue will be coming out on Friday. So the 18th of August. I have another prize to give away. I'm sh I promise we'll get into the knitting and all the stuff that I've been doing this week shortly. But yes, I was given a pattern from lovely Kristen of Yarn Gas and Podcast and Wool and Ryan Yarns. And as you probably know, she has launched the most wonderful shawl design, the Oracle Shawl, and gave me a pattern to give away to one of you guys. So I have opened a Ravelry thread for that that I closed just now. And the rule for that was to post the most gorgeous, intricate, amazing shawl you know of on Ravelry. And I have drawn a winner from that as well. And the winner is, I know who this is actually, but I want to pronounce things roughly right. It is post 32, Miri Yummy. And I feel like this is so well deserved because not only has she tried to knit this shawl again and again and again and again, and according to her, never really succeeded. So it's still on her like knitting bucket list. The other reason I feel like this is so well deserved is not like I have to justify my random number generator, but I feel like it's right because she has been with this, with me and this podcast since almost the very beginning. I think maybe even the very beginning. So, I mean, that's just awesome. Thank you so much for sticking out with me for that long and congratulations on winning the Oracle Shawl. So just get in touch with me on Ravelry and I'll pass you along to Kristen who will give you the pattern. I swear there's just something magical that happens every time. Like I sit here for like a couple of hours in the morning and I have my breakfast and drink and I start writing up my show notes. And I click record and the dog starts barking, they start switching on the leaf blower and the chainsaw and the sun comes out to make things roasted in here and just like everything happens and this happens every time and it doesn't matter what day I choose to record on or which hour I choose to click the record button. I don't know if you heard that, that was even more like just crushing glass, I think it's the... I'm sure I'm gonna get a bunch of comments now just say why do you worry so much about this, Ellie? I can't hear anything. I can hear it all. It's super, super distracting and I feel like... <laughs> it's just like my sentences are incoherent and I'm just like... Yeah, but yeah, it got roasted hot now, so I'm gonna take off this beautiful shawl that I'm totally happy to talk about, which is the Sprites Fen Shawl, which is one of the shawls from the other pattern subscription club that's got nothing to do with me, from Curious Handmade. So Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade has a pattern subscription club for shawls it's called the shawl society 2 because she's done this once before and yeah and it is a madeline tosh tosh sock 
And yeah, three skeins. Made myself a little gradient out of the sales bin at loop. Uh, for some reason, there's always the brown yarns left at loop. Or any yarn shop, really. I like brown. It reminds me of wood and chocolate. And it just looks super nice with this lace and garter. And I just, yeah. It's just right. Oh yeah, elephant in the room, you guys. New haircut. Yeah. So I could have shown you this haircut like straight up from the shower and dried my hair and make it look all nice. No, I decided to show you my new haircut after having it in a bun for two days. So uh, let's just say my hairdresser styled this slightly better than I did. See the other amusing thing about the noise levels is as soon as I'm done recording, it is dead quiet in my neighborhood. It is just when I record, no matter when I choose to. It's a curse, it's a curse. I really wish I had some sewing to show you guys because, I mean, I don't sew, but I have been playing around with some fabrics. I have washed all my fabrics. I have ironed them until I run out of water in the iron and I can't really seem to fill up water in my iron when it's still hot because it literally splashes water everywhere. I don't know how to aim it into that little hole. It's not my iron, so I don't really understand how that works. So I've only managed to iron so much and um, cut off my pieces to make drawstring bags and now I'm scared. I mean, I know the cutting is the scariest part, so literally now it's just sewing and dealing with that, but uh, yeah, it's scary. I don't like it. I want to be handheld through this. Uh, so yeah, we'll talk about sewing a bit later, but for now, we're actually in progress and I don't have any finished objects this week. I thought I'd have a few actually, but yeah, I wouldn't say this has been a non-productive week regardless. I have knitted so much, my hands are kind of cramping up and I need to take that seriously soon. Um, but yeah, the knitting production level has been high, definitely high this week. and So a lot of things have been knitted, although I haven't finished anything yet. And now we can talk about the flea card again, um, which is for the flea knit along, although obviously I am not eligible for any prizes. I don't actually have any prizes yet, so that's an issue as well. Um, but we're still knitting the cardigan together, me and Kristen of the Yarn Gasm podcast and everyone else who's decided to cast it on. And I'll show you how far I got, because I am actually ready to bind off. Now, why haven't I bound off yet, I hear you say. Well, the rib is supposed to be six centimeters, but it's more like four or five right now. But it's the right length. Yeah? So I'm like, I don't want to rip up here and redo things so I get the right height. Can I just like deal with the shorter rib? Is that fine? Are we going to like really compare and be like, hey, your cuff is a bit longer. I think we're good. I think I just need to bind off and then there's the bottom bands left and then I will steak. So what I do, and this is generally recommended if you're doing the kind of rogue steaking that I do, pick up the bottom bands in the steak, you literally pick them up from underneath your garment. You don't need to have cut anything to do that. And then you knit them, bind them off, and then you cut. I like to wash up my knits before I cut because the wool sets a little bit then. It will definitely already have stuck enough for it to not unravel. And then I cut. I don't do anything else. I don't secure it. I don't like using the crochet chain, but I might do that this time because it does look more attractive. But I will say, it doesn't really do much to secure your steak long term. I feel like maybe that's a bold claim of mine, but logic tells me that will unravel in time if it is a superwash. This, however, is a non-superwash, very sticky yarn, so nothing's gonna unravel here ever. The more you wear it, the more sturdy it will get and just stay this way. And I've also managed to put all my loose ends in the steaks so I can just cut these right off don't have to weave in anything and the ones where I have joined yarn because I run out I have spit spliced so there's just no ends to weave in aside from where I began and where I ended and the armholes once I have grafted those so yeah full picture it is cropped I crop my garments to avoid the pain of adapting to two completely different sizes and it just looks more attractive on me, I think. Because if I just end something on the widest portion of my body, I just end up looking wide all over. So, yeah. Um, I can talk a bit more about the yarn in case you don't know already that I am using Holst Super Soft. And Holst Super Soft is part of a family of yarn that I want to say is all sourced from JC Rennie. 
I think, which is a Scottish um, spinner, yarn producer. Their yarn has been used by like proper, proper fashion knits. They, you know, sell them away on cones and people knit stuff from like, you know, Chanel and what have you. Um, so it's been widely used. It's very soft, you know, lovely, lovely lamb's wool. But right now it does not feel soft at all because it's full spinning oil. So it's super rewarding when you finally finish knitting something, give it a good wash and it's just a dream. And it's become a hobby of mine now to like give people this cardigan to feel. And then I give them the swatch that I made that I washed up and they're like, magic and it's totally magic um like this might actually be my desert island yarn to be honest because i mean assuming there's water on the desert i can wash it and have this experience because this yarn is lovely and you can use it for a lot of things because it's skin friendly it's sturdy rustic color work friendly could probably do some decent shawls with these as well you can hold it double you can do so many things with this yarn it is amazing so when I say it's part of a whole family sourced by JC Rennie, there are a bunch of other yarns that are the same or equivalent. You know, Molson or Mood in Norway, there is, I think, Magasin Duet, I want to say, in Sweden. There is an equivalent in Germany, I forgot the name. There is Garnetzal, which is also Danish. Um, there is just a number of yarns that you could use together. You have a very wide, broad palette of colours there. So, so it's already gotten more quiet now, this is lovely. Thank you, neighborhood. So yeah, I think I have. Okay, I have one more things to one more thing to mention here. I have done something a bit wrong, also with the sleeves, and I didn't realize until I was done. So the reason, what's wrong, is that there should actually be a little bit of a highlight along the zigzag here. So I'm supposed to use one of my contrast colors. Uh, I didn't see that because I printed out my pattern in grayscale. So I'm just doing it this way and it actually looks really nice. I think that's art by accident, so to speak, you know, it's a design feature. I'm okay with this. I think it's supposed to be the pink that I'm supposed to repeat here. But I am happy with what I've done. So yeah, that is all I have to say for this now. Hopefully we can see some very serious progress next week. Um, yeah, I just never push myself to finish. I'm not like, oh, I'm so close to finishing now. I'm gonna have a finished object by the next week and or this week. If it happens, it happens. I hope it happens, because I want to wear this thing, because it's, oh, it fits so well. I have tried it on, and it's just like, yeah, I can try it on now. But let's leave that as a surprise for another episode, yeah? Now, I have mentioned that I have cast on my Eleanor sweater. Um, I didn't want to show you earlier, because I did literally just on the rib, and that is still the case. I am doing both the front and the back piece at the same time. Yes, I have decided to do it pieced. But if I change my mind, I can literally join it at any point in time. But for now, I'm trying it pieced. I believe I've gotten about two out of three inches done. If I might be close to three inches now. That's about as much as I need to do before I get into the lace, where I get to up my needle size drastically. I've gotten 3.25 millimeter needles right now, and I'm gonna go up to four millimeters. So that's gonna be a bit of a treat, and I'm gonna get to see this grow a lot faster. Needle sizes here are actually quite equivalent to what I've used in the flea cardigan. So it shouldn't take that much longer to make. However, then, you know, there is all the purling. There is the fact that it's lace rather than colour work, which doesn't exactly speed me up. The yarn I'm using is the Timeless Fine Wool. Sometimes they call all the products Timeless, actually. By Stoff Steve, which is a Danish company of uh, fabric shops. Uh, we have them in Norway as well. I live in this amazing fabric bag of mine that I forgot the owner of. Uh, owner, maker, I am the owner. And uh, yeah, so it's just a lovely yarn. It's definitely comparable to whole super soft. Although going by the meter edge, not made by the same people. So not JC Run in this case, I don't think. But yeah, the meter edge is crazy. I think it was like 300 or 350 meters in a 50 gram ball. So we'll definitely be sourcing yarn there again. And it's amazingly soft. This is not yarn I need to wash out the spinning oil off to feel it soft. It's already just perfect. Actually, I have a swatch to show you what the Eleanor swatch is going to look like. Now, I have shown this before, but again, ignore the stitch markers. They're just for me to measure how long the lace repeats are. So if you can see that, can we just do this this way? Yeah, it is pretty nice. It's definitely going to be fairly see-through, so I'm going to have my little black tank top underneath, I think. Uh, each lace repeat is actually five centimeters here, so that's like, what, two inches? 
So it's pretty easy for me to measure and I decided to add another uh, lace repeats. I get 10 centimeters extra as a size because I want it to be quite loose. Um, yeah, don't want to stretch out the lace, although maybe it, my chest will be stretched out just a little bit. So yeah, um, we'll see how this goes. I don't expect this to be a fast project. I don't expect it to finish it this year even. Um, I'm hoping to finish it in time for the history cal because that is what I intend to submit it to. But realistically, yeah, I might submit a couple of other projects of mine because I have a bunch of them actually that are eligible because I have cast them on later. They are under 30 projects because I very often seem to knit uh, designs that have not so many projects on Ravelry. So yeah, I can mention a couple of others that are eligible actually. Another one that would be eligible is the squirrel cardigan and I had knit this last week and I haven't touched it since last week but now I get to show you because last week I didn't have time for whips. Uh, we do this time. So the squirrel cardigan is a Norwegian pattern and this is what it looks like. It's a baby cardigan. It's for a six month old but I think it looks a lot bigger than six months you guys. But that's fine. So it's got squirrels on it. I'm very sorry if you can hear my washing machine, it's just, uh, that's my fault. Oops. Uh, yeah, so it's got a stick as well. Bottom up as opposed to the other cardigan, the fleet cardigan. And it's got those annoying button bounds that you have to knit upwards and then kind of stretch them just right to sew them on. I just hate those. But I didn't think before I cast this on, so. There we go, I'm just gonna have to do it. I've done it before, it's fine. It's better on a baby garment, actually. So let me talk you through the yarn. So the grey yarn I'm using is the Lamb's Wool by Doma, which I've read about tons of times but actually never actually knitted with. Actually, actually, actually. So that's one yarn I haven't used before. The brown is Ultra by Jameson's of Shetland. It's another yarn I haven't used yet but raved about many times. Taking over a lot of boxes here. The white and the green is Fenella by Susan Crawford. Also yarns I haven't knit with before. Though I will say, I am not in love with it. I wish I could say I was. But no, it just, it seems very weak. It feels like it should be like your usual Shetland yarn, but it seems frail and the twist comes loose. It's very loosely plied and uh, maybe I'm just, I haven't found the right purpose for it. You know, maybe this isn't what it's meant for. I don't know, just that. Uh, I even noticed when it's in the cake form and they just kind of fall out of shape, which is not what I expect that kind of yarn to do, you know. So, but I hope I can still speak it and it'll be fine. And the blue is by Garnet so that's their Highland wool that I just mentioned. And I have swatched with it, but I never actually knit with it. So, all of these yarns are new to me. I wish I could get an entry for each yarn, but that's not how this cow works, I don't think. So, it will be eligible if I finish in time and I don't see how I wouldn't because it knit up so quickly and it's going to be super cute and tiny and small and just oh <laughs> tiny and small you guys yes it's for some, for some friends of mine who are expecting their second baby and I mean it might already fit their firstborn when I make this because I mean she's like what two years old now so this might actually nah maybe not I don't know we'll see I don't know what kind of baby they're getting, so I went for something very gender neutral, which I probably would have gone for anyway. And yeah, I'm also going to try to plop in a photo here of what the garment should look like once I finish. And it is from the second um, book in the Kofta Buchen series. This is the book in question. It is an amazing book. Actually, someone mentioned to me in the comment section that I think maybe the first book in the series has been translated into Icelandic. So maybe there is some translation stuff in progress here, but just in case, this is the people you want to get in touch with about any translation. Mm -hmm. That was my phone, not yours. Everybody calm down. <laughs> so yeah, it's just an amazing book of amazing cardigans and just, it's worth uh, like way more than you pay for it because it's just got so many cardigans in here like just check out this little photo that should tell you a lot what you can expect from this book it is i say saying that hours of work in this book is an understatement so i mean and there are two of them which is even better i hope there will be a third one there wasn't last year because i always had this image in my head in my mind that they're going to come up with the red edition like there's a blue one this is a green one and i'm thinking like it's a faded wine red the red cardigan in the cover Make it happen. So for those of you who don't know 
what they have done here is taken old cardigan designs and redone them for yarns that are currently on the market, a variety of sizes, maybe trying to convert some of them to top down because that is more trendy now, I guess. They change some of them into yokes if they have any set in sleeves or they keep the set in sleeves, um, sewn in sleeves that is. Um, so yeah, they kind of redoctor them a little bit, but they generally take old garment designs and make them new. It's just such a great initiative. Now, what has happened to me this week is that I have been on a real mitten kick. And this happened when I was developing a mitten design that just occurred to me from out of the blue. And I will get to that in a bit, but I thought I'd save that for last because I always like saving the best for last. And this is totally true for the mitten club as well, by the way. I'm saving the best mittens for last, for sure. December, you guys. Yeah. Anyway, so as I knit the design mittens that I'm going to show you at the end, I was like, whoa, they knit off quickly, I want to do more. So I decided to just use that mitten mojo to make some mittens that my mom said she wanted for Christmas. Now, she won't remember that she said that because that's one of the good things about mom. She can say what she wants and I'll be like, yeah, I'll get you that. And she'll forget and be surprised when Christmas comes. So I picked up this book and I said, you know, is there any mitten from here you want me to make you? I want to make a mitten from this book. So if I know this one you want, then, you know, that makes my life easier. And she browsed through and she was like, okay these colors are nice and I was like yeah I like those I have that yarn so that'll be easy but she's like yeah but I like that design which is like okay I'll just use that those colors on that design and so that's what I have done and we have some mittens so this is in Viking Norlis which is northern lights so Viking northern lights they do not have thumbs yet that's why we don't have a finished object but hey I've done two pairs of mittens without thumbs in a week Actually, I've done another mitten, but that's a secret. Uh, so yeah, they look really cool in this gradient. Just, I mean, the kind of gradient this way, really. Uh, I don't know what else to say. I don't think this is the most mitten appropriate yarn. Like if you look up close, it's not quite that lovely look that you get with, you know, rustic yarns. This is a very fluffy yarn. It's a single ply. It does have nylon, so it does have some strength, but it's not my yarn of choice for mittens, but if that's what mom wants and they, it is very nice and soft, there's a Christmas gift already happening, so I'm early this year. I'm not gonna be doing that many Christmas gifts, I think. Uh, Christmas, Christmas knit gifts, that is. So yeah, this is the yarn I used. I still have some left after I've made two pairs of mittens, because I, I have made a pair of mittens earlier, and I was hoping to just knit this up and kind of get rid of it, because it's been in my stash for too long. Uh, now I don't know what to do with the rest. I could probably make another pair of mittens, at least this. I don't know if I want to. So maybe put it in a swap, swap pile. Maybe someone else would like to, I don't know. So yeah, that's it. I don't really have much else to say. I have some gripe with the pattern writing and I don't think it's the designer's fault. I think there is a clash between designer and graphic designer here. So the way the book has... <laughs> The way it's charted here, I want to just show you in the corner so I don't give away too much. It's showing you in the main color and the contrast color. Now the problem is that the symbols is in the same color as the contrast colors. You can't see the symbols when these appear in the pattern. They just look like a red square. Someone just like missed out on that error and the result is that you can't see where the decreases should happen. So it's a bit of a guesswork. I am, yeah, kind of guessing, and I think accurately guessing where they go, but it does make the final Kitchener stitching at the top a bit off, I think. So it didn't, it's not the best that it could be. I think I've done it right, but yeah, I don't really know. So yeah, maybe someone should have, you know, had the <laughs> designer and the graphic designer meet up and be like, okay, do we agree on this? And yeah, no, it's a mistake that could happen to anyone. The It's clear that the knitwear designer has thought about this because it's just it's there but you can't see it <laughs> and so for the design that i've been developing i have been knitting super super quickly and okay so i am able to make caloric mittens relatively quickly as demonstrated with the enigma mittens but since i got chayagu needles i have just sped up like i am totally crediting chayagu here because this was the first time I knit with Chayagu and I'm like, whoa, I have a half mitten already. When does this happen? And so, yeah, they just, 
I never thought about my Addies or Knit Pro or um, Prim, all those needles that I love, as needles that slow me down. I don't think they do. But there's something with the Charagoose that just kind of eliminates some sort of... I don't know what it is, but yeah, it just sped me up. So, these mittens... I want to give credit where credit's due. As some of you will remember in Katie, aka Miss Lavelli of uh, Inside Number 23's podcast, she said she'd like to make herself some pumpkin spice mittens. So with colour work. And that just got my brain churning and I was like, I saw even a phrase. Anyway, the wheels went around in my head and I thought, I have pictures in my mind, I need to chart this in Excel and I did that while I was like doing something kind of passive at work so I had a tie and I was like making this thing with ex Oh god, I am just going to show you. So basically, I came up with the design and it looks like this. So, first mitten I came up with looked like this. So it's a mug with pumpkin spice latte. It's a little cinnamon sideways thing here. It's a little coffee bean. There is a pumpkin on top here and it's just like hard and just like oh it's very whimsical I love that and at the back you just have this very kind of mix of the whole whimsical glittery starry thing and a cheeky little pumpkin on the gusset <laughs> which I sampled from a computer game that I have actually it's pretty cool um so yeah that's just one mitten now the kind of sad thing uh, before I get into the sad thing, I want to show you the other mitten because it's a slightly different. Obviously, these are fraternal twins. That was the idea anyway. Uh, so it says, I heart pumpkin spice latte. And that was Katie's idea again. So I just plopped that in there. So you have two charts to choose from, essentially. The kind of stupid thing that I have done, though. So these are not going to be fraternal twins after all. Because they are <laughs> both right-handed mittens. And I realized that as I was going to make the second thumb and I'd like... This is a very similar procedure. Yeah, it would be, because they're both right-hand mittens. The pattern is correct. I've already written up the pattern, so don't worry about that. I just didn't think, essentially. This nearly happened with the Tallulah mittens as well. I couldn't keep myself from looking at the first mitten chart that I've used when I was making the second one. I'm like, oh God, just look at the right chart, Ellie. So yeah, I think I'll be knitting up this once more for a left-hand mitten. And then this can be just a single mitten, or maybe I'll have yarn left to do the other one. Because this is as much as I have left now, so it's possible. And I have definitely more white phenyl yarn. I don't have more of the Navia Duo, which is the orange. So, yeah. And that's the yarn, by the way. It's just a rustic two-ply fingering weight yarn. So phenyl yarn is perfect. Navia Duo is perfect. You know, those jumper weight Shetland yarns will be perfect. Tukey Wool fingering, definitely. Uh, probably Ulcentrum by... Ulcentrum, I guess, the two-ply yarn they have, the Gotland wool. I'm sure Osk by Hilleswag would be great. There's a lot of options there for you. Um, so yeah, I am just stress knitting these to finish in time for maybe getting some test knitters for them. If you do know some really quick uh, colour work test knitters out there, then that will be grand, because I just need to make these done so that I can hopefully have them out by pumpkin spice season, so people who want to make, make them can make them in September and also October, and just have them for the season where they should be had, and not me publishing the pattern when people are over it, you know. There's that, so just one more look before I put these away. And they've been blocked and they're gorgeous. Just the fact that I have a left hand and not two right hands. So these mittens don't, aren't going to fit me or anyone I know. So need to make another one. And I thought I was going to have a finished object this week. Oh dear. So when this just struck me, I was like, oh god, what am I going to do? I just don't want to knit anything. And I just cast on a chunky weight hat. This is the Caspara hat, which is a pattern from... Sticky Sidas Favoritid, which has been given away for free actually on a website called Puth. And I was um, given this recommendation for someone watching this podcast and I said I didn't know what to do with this yarn. So this is Blåne by Hillesvog. It's an amazing burgundy pels yarn. So chunky way, a gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. I feel like it's very soft, but I, again, people differ there. So I look forward to having this as a hat and I think it's going to fit me just fine. So yeah, I'm very optimistic about that and it's a nice kind of uncomplicated knit after the whole right hand mitten disaster. 
Like I could try to fudge it, but um, no, I think I'm just gonna have to make another one. And then it'll be a third mitten that doesn't have another mitten friend. Oops. So there we are. I think we can cover acquisitions now. Because I've been to Cambridge. But before we cover the Cambridge purchases, I want to mention something I had forgot to mention last time. Because I went to Pom Pom Magazine's website. I was looking for something completely different, but they're like, you get these issues for half price if you order from us. And I'm like, well, well. So I got these. I feel like I may have gotten more, but I don't think so. So I got issue... I got issue 11, I got the first issue, the remade one, issue 14 and 12. And I just browsed through all of these on Ravelry to see if they had any projects that would interest me and that's kind of how I selected these. Um, so I'm probably not going to you know, catch them all, kind of. Um, but I want to give Pom Pom a chance. I've always said that I love Pom Pom and I love what they do and I really admire them, but there's never really been anything in them that appeal to me when I look through them I'm just like yeah it's nice cool modern but that looks like the kind of thing I could maybe just buy I I have this weird thing with knitting the stuff that I prefer when it comes to knitting are stuff that doesn't scream handmade because then people just look at you and like oh you made that mm. but I also don't want the stuff that just says I could have bought this you know there's a very fine little balance there where it looks knitted but it shouldn't just scream I made this it doesn't shouldn't look that yeah you know what I mean I think I've tried to explain this before to people and I think they know what I mean as well so. so I'm trying to branch out a bit from that little narrow little area between the two and try to see okay so this looks as nice and as kind of streamlined as if it could be you know it's not a ski jumper um, but I can still enjoy making it and wearing it and often those are the knits that I wear the most so we're giving Pom Pom a thorough chance here. And the other thing I have gotten, which makes me so excited and is totally to blame for most of the yarn purchases this week, it is... I have wanted this book for so long. Now this is a sock design book, it's all colourwork socks by someone who goes by Tant. And as I was showing you this book, my battery died, so let's try this again. Tant Ultus Socks. So Tant Ultus is a, I'm saying this in an awful like Norse Swedish kind of way, but there you go. She's a Swedish designer, she does socks, she does them amazingly well. And these are just all colour work socks and it's just the greatest thing ever. And look at those socks, I mean, just, oh, I'm gonna make these. These are on top of my list. And I might also do these, they're the same ones as up here, somewhere oh, there. <laughs> So yeah, I just want to make everything in here. I think that's a totally valid goal. And I've wanted this book for a long time, but finally they have translated it into English, which requires slightly less brain power of me than reading Swedish. Um, like my understanding of spoken Swedish is totally fluent, but when it comes to reading it, I'm just like, is that how you write it? I never knew. Uh, so yeah, happy to have this in English, I think. I think that's going to make my life a bit easier. So I just, oh. I actually brought this up to Wild and Wool in London and showed it to Anna who runs the shop and she's like oh, I just told her like you need to have this in stock and she was like yes I do need to have this in stock so hopefully we can see it there I don't know let's see it's just a great book so without further ado I mean you can check this out on Ravelry all the patterns are up there and you should look at them and drool so I'm gonna show you the yarn I bought for that because I went to Loop and they actually have some decent affordable sock yarn because they got Lang sock yarn and that's like, what's that, like four pounds a skein or something like that. So I bought a few. I got a mustard yellow one because as you see, I will be needing mustard yellow. I got a burgundy one because me and burgundy, oh there we go, that's the right side. Me and burgundy, you can't just tear us apart. I got a kind of silvery grey one, nearly white. Uh, you can see it's a bit tough to get across the middle here, it's because there is a little, a little spool in the middle where you get some extra nylon yarn if you want to make your heels and toes sturdier. I'm definitely going to remember to use that this time. I got purple because purple is awesome, and I have a colourway in mind because I've seen a bunch of people do the Molly socks in a particular colourway, and I'm like, I'm going to do that. So I got 
black because I always need black yarn so and you never remember to buy black yarn you just sit there and like I don't have any black yarn because who would buy black yarn but I also got charcoal because charcoal is amazing it's like black but not really you know and there's the last one white again white is also one of those yarns where you're like you just don't buy it because it's so plain ordinary you don't notice it but then you need it so again apologize on behalf of my washing machine i am clearly doing laundry today <laughs> so there's lang yarns and i had actually been looking at west yorkshire spinner yarns up at well and woolly but i decided against it now as you will have seen in the introduction to this video if i included it i have uh, been to cambridge and i was like can we just go to the sheep shop i'm probably not gonna buy anything i just kind of want to go there and we did and it has like big red posters in the window that they are closing down which is super sad because it's a lovely lovely shop and it's pretty much the only wool shop that is a proper wool shop in cambridge so they're shutting down in october but uh, the other thing that was written on those signs is that they have a 20 percent of discount on everything and they had west yorkshire spinners yarns so there's four ply signature which is their sock yarn I got four, I got a lime green one, I got a grey one, I got a white one, again, you always need white, and I got another mustard yellow one, because I realised if I'm going to make those socks that use these colours, I'm going to be super annoyed if I have to pop in my lang yarn, when I could have just gotten this, so I just did that, I'll be using mustard yellow again, so I wouldn't worry there, and the lime green, I don't know what to do with that, it's just going to be some crazy socks, because this is the book for that, that book. Now my bag is empty, but there is some more yarn to talk about. Because <laughs> I mean, when you got 20% off, and they had Malabrigo, and I never really cared for Malabrigo. I've heard from a bunch of people on the Twitter that it pills like, just, yeah. The colors are amazing, but then it starts pilling. However, the thicker the yarn is, the better plied it is, the better sort of spun, and the less likely it is to pill. And so I came across the Rios. So this is the Malabrigo Rios. And they had five in this colorway, which is exactly what I need to make a garment. And the garment I have in mind is actually in one of those pom pom magazines. So yeah. And this was actually quite affordable for this particularly dyed yarn and. From everything I've heard about Rios by Malabrigo, it's actually really good. Like, the skins tend to be a bit tangled, but it seems to hold up fairly well for a superwash merino. I still expect a fair bit of pilling, just because all superwash merinos pill. But you know what? I have my cashmere comb. I think I will be ready to attack this if it happens. And, you know, I wear a superwash merino cardigan pretty much every day. And it stopped pilling at some point. And now it's just lovely. So, yeah. I think this is gonna be nice. So you know what, I don't always do rustic yarn cardigans. Sometimes I just want something really soft and squishy myself, and that's totally fine. Uh, so yeah, the design is actually designed by Linda something something of Kettle Yarn, so it's a local designer. So yeah, I think I'm gonna do a cardigan of hers. Put in a picture and a name here if I can remember, but yeah. So I think that's it, you know. That's my acquisitions as far as knitting goes. I feel a bit silly for having like all of this, you know, a week after I said that I should be buying my yarn because I literally don't have much money. Um, and that's true and shame on me. And I don't really have anything to defend myself. But what I did also buy is a book on sewing. Now, a lot of people have told me this is the perfect beginner's kind of, you know, entry level sewing book. It literally tells you everything. And I need to know everything because I literally know nothing. So Tilly of Tilly on the Buttons is going to tell me everything I need to know. And I do actually have a bunch of um, fabric pieces laid out for some drawstring bags. So once I've done those, I'm going to dive into that book and see what I can make of it. And maybe actually learn this lovely craft that I'm sure I could have a lot of fun with if I just feel comfortable with it. But right now it's just super scary and intimidating and I need to get over that hurdle. So yeah. But you guys, that's all I have for you today. And that one, my yarn fell down because I weighed my arms. A uh, little bit of a recap. There are a bunch of knit-alongs happening. Um, I know the Color Your World socks will 
wrap up and the end of the month and then we'll start off the Marius Cal. The Selby Mitten Club has kind of started now with the mittens that are already published but the secret patterns haven't come out yet. Um, be sure to check out if you won for the giveaways, you know, if you were one of the names that I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, you need to claim your prize. And yeah, I didn't have any finished objects this week but I think I am fairly close to having a few things finished, maybe by next week won't pressure myself in any way but you know we can always hope and yeah i will see you next week bye